Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today is Ficus Friday and what I have to do today is I've got to photograph the auction ficus for the auction catalogue. Winter has returned once again outside. Lately I've been potting up a lot of my tropicals that were in seed trays and bringing them into the plant room. So on the floor down here I am getting full once again. I have a lot of trees on the floor and I have a lot of trees on the bench here. So what I've got to do, there's the auction ficus here under the UFO light. So I've got to clear off this bench so I can get a nice plain background. And I'm thinking maybe a white background for this session. And I can uh, photograph the tree using the UFO light, maybe that white background, and try and get a nice picture for the auction catalog. I'll need to clear up some space. I'll have to move part of my jungle somewhere else in the house so I can get room to photograph the tree. I have got space to photograph the auction tree now. I managed to fit all my trees in the plant room here, on the floor, under benches. Oh my goodness, it's full in here. Okay, so now I need a nice background. I was thinking for the background, I've got this sort of flexible, I think it's an automotive uh, material. It's black on the one side and kind of an off-white on the other side. I could uh, put this up behind the tree and I think that would work really nice as a background. I could try both, you know, the black and maybe the other side and see what picture looks best. All right, up goes the black background. I'll use thumbtacks to hold it in place because I don't want it there permanently. Here, here. Okay, and I think that's going to be it. I may have to raise the tree up a bit Here's a look at my setup so far. So the background just fits the tree in. I can't do much about the size of the background. I think that's about as big as I can get. But maybe if I move the camera back further and maybe change the lenses to a longer lens so I can kind of compress the tree so I don't get as much. This is right now is a wide angle lens. So you see a lot of the, the background material. So something that's more focused. So I'll try that. I've switched to a longer lens now, so I'll zoom in and I'll show you what the view looks like. Something like that, so it's getting better. Yeah, I think the lighting on the tree isn't too bad. It's kind of side lighting, it kind of shows the trunk off quite nicely. I may have to do a little trimming in the canopy, some of those shoots are extending out quite wide. Just to kind of uh, you know, tidy it up a little bit. I'll have to add moss to the base of the tree to cover that bonsai soil up and get the stand. So I'll work on those things. I've got my stand out now, so I'll replace the turntable with the stand and see how that looks. Down comes the tree. Down comes the spinning tree bonsai turntable. And up goes the stand. And I hope this fits on the table. I haven't tried it yet. Oh, it's close, but it fits. Wow, that just fits. Okay, up goes the tree. Let's have a look through the camera now, see what kind of shot I can get. Here's a look at the shot now. It's improving. I think I have to move the tree and the table away from the background more because I'm getting kind of a shadow here. That eh, doesn't look very good. I need to move the tree out just a little more. You can still see a bit of the shadow there. Okay, that is looking better. I think I've got to bring the camera up higher too. I think it, it's pretty good. Um, I think I need like a reflector to get a little more light from this direction. So I'll see if I can get a reflector. It did light up the trunk a little bit more. Not much of the foliage though. I'd need a something better. Unfortunately, I have all my trees in the way there. I'd have to move them all out of the way. I've taken a series of test shots at different exposures. I think it's looking quite good. I, I think that's going to be quite nice for the catalog. So I'm going to add the moss to the planting now and take the final photographs. I think I'll add the moss around the rocks and maybe on this side and leave, you know, it mosses out front here. 
So here I go with the moss. I've got the moss applied to the tree. I didn't cover the entire soil surface. I've left a bit for, you know, the moss to travel and expand. I think I'll just do a little bit of pruning up top just to tidy up some of those really long shoots. I don't want to prune back the horizontal spreading nature of the tree too much. Um, I will just take like the end off here, like that. And over here, I can take the shoot off there. Up top here, take off some of these shoots that are going upwards. It does need pruning uh, and shoot selection, but I'll let the new owner decide what they want to do with it. I'm hoping they continue to grow this leader up here. I think it needs, you know, a continuation of the trunk kind of coming forward up the middle to develop, you know, a full rounded crown up in this area. I think that'll look really good. So this is a very important shoot to develop that and strengthen it up. And it'll grow quickly because it's vertical and all the energy will go up the shoot eventually. So it'll develop a nice rounded crown in the future. It'll look really, really good. I'll take a few more test shots now, and if everything's looking okay, those will be the final pictures. I put a pop can in some of the photos of the tree just to give the viewer who's looking at the photo an idea of how large the tree is. If you don't have any object for a scale of reference, it's sometimes really hard to imagine how big a tree is just from a photograph. I picked up a new tool at the surplus store the other day. It was from their, you know, used medical supplies. So it's a tweezer and it also has kind of a a shovel on the end. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, there's the end of it there. So it might be useful as a soil scoop and the other end has the tweezer like that. Really cool tool and it cost one dollar. So that's pretty awesome to find that. I'm going to miss the auction ficus from the plant room here. Yeah, I, I see it as a tree with a lot of potential, and I think it's going to be, whoever gets it, I think is a lucky person. I think it's a great tree to add to anyone's collection. I'm going to head outside into the winter wonderland. It's quite stormy outside, and we're expecting the temperatures to really drop. So this will be the last day that I can repot those wild almond trees and my date palms into smaller pots. I'll bring them into the plant room and that'll be it for the tropical trees outside. Okay, let's head out to the greenhouse now. Boy, what a wintry day. I had a buildup of snow for the first time on the roof of the greenhouse this morning. I think there's still some on the far side here. Yeah, a little bit. Let's head inside and we'll see how warm it is inside. Whew. Well, it feels much warmer in here. It's almost 10 degrees. This morning when I came out, it was one or two degrees above freezing. So yeah, getting down pretty cold. And tonight is going to be even colder. So I don't know if the greenhouse will freeze, but it might come close. The wind is just a howling away outside and it's cold and it's getting colder. And it's really strange in the greenhouse here because while it's winter outside in the greenhouse here, it's really pleasant. I don't really even need a jacket in here. And it's strange looking out, out of the glass windows and seeing all the snow and cold around me and being in this warm kind of bubble in here. It's a really good feeling. It's pretty cool. I've got three wild almond trees back here that need to be potted up into smaller pots. And then I've got to pot up my date palms also. I was reading up on date palms last night. Um, date palms are a fairly slow growing species, even if you grow them in a good environment. And it also said that 
don't expect good tasting dates from your trees that you grow from seed. Um, first of all, 50% of the trees that you grow from seed will be male and you need a male and a female to reproduce and get dates. So only the females will give fruit. And of those females that do fruit, it said that probably 90% of the fruit you get off the date palms will be inedible. It'll, it'll just be terrible tasting. Um, date palms have been cultivated for thousands of years and they're reproduced by getting pups off the date, off the palm tree and planting those. So if you do get a really good tasting date off of a tree, you take a pup off of it, plant it, and that's how you reproduce the tree. If you do grow them from seeds, it'll be like me. I'm just growing them for fun to see how they grow over the years, not to get dates off of them. I can see outside there my tub of soil and I'll have to get two pots. I should have brought them in the greenhouse yesterday, but I didn't think of it. I've got two pots picked out. I'll put the date palms in the round one and I'll put the almonds in the giant one there. I've got the soil in the greenhouse. It's uh, It shouldn't be frozen because it was very dry. Let me see. No problem. I'm going to start by potting up the date palms. So I'll see if they pull out of the soil. Maybe they don't. They seem to be firmly attached to something. Hopefully they're not going out the drainage holes or something. They're very deeply rooted in the pot here. You can see some of the seed pods are still attached to the roots. There's a close-up look at that. You can see the seed with the root coming out of it. Another seed pod here that's done for. Yeah, it looks like there's the roots are long and not that ramified. So this is a double seed tray and I think the roots are growing out the drainage holes and between the two seed trays. So that's not the greatest situation because they're really firmly attached. The seed trays are wanting to fall apart. Yeah, it's definitely gone through and rooted between. Yeah, there's where all the fibrous roots are between the seed trays. Okay, so I can pull that one out now. I got the root out of that one, which is pretty good. There's one. This one, oh my goodness. I just have to pull. There it goes. There's the roots on that one. Still got the seed attached to it. Kind of cool. And the little one here. Come on, little one. Oh, there it goes. And it still has its seed attached. See that? <laughs> the, seed, the root goes down and then straight back up. Interesting. So that's it for that seed tray. So I can plant these date palms now. Date palms like a moist but free draining soil. So I think bonsai soil will be perfect for them. All right, I have a drainage screen in the bottom of the pot. So I'll put a base layer of soil in like that. And then I'll plant the trees or the palms. So this root definitely won't fit in the pot, so I'll have to prune that off. So I'll just snip it. There's some subdividing here, so I'll just snip it off here. Like that. And the other one also has a long root. I'll have to snip that off there. And the little one, the root goes straight up, so it'll be fine. So I'm going to try and space them out a bit. Okay, so I'll get some soil around the first two and then I'll get the smallest one in like that and I can fill the pot up with soil. Now all they need is water. All right, here I go with the water. That should be good. That's got the date palms planted. Next, I'll plant the wild almonds. 
I'm going to start by pruning the almond down in height. So it has kind of a main trunk here, a little shoot coming off the side, and then it divides. So I think I'm just going to prune it off here. Here and here and the smallest one to here. Like that, that gets it down in height. And now I can try and get it out of the pot. I think I'll take my jacket off. It is quite nice here in the greenhouse. Okay, let's, let's get this almond out of here. Now there's some other cuttings around here. That one didn't root. This one is green and that looks like a, it might be a ficus religiosa. I'll see if there's any roots on it. No, there's no roots on it. It's just a cutting I put in there. There's another one that has green buds and this, I think that was maybe a lilac cutting, maybe. But again, it's got green buds on it, but can't keep everything. Okay, so let's get this almond sorted out. The trunk is going far down onto the soil here. Mm, there's more stuff sprouting down there too. There's some, something, I guess that's a root. There's a lot of seeds in this soil. Like that's a ginkgo, a ginkgo seed. And when I gave some of the cuttings to Jay, uh, he got a ginkgo tree that was just in the same soil as whatever cutting I gave him. So. Yeah, you never know. You just keep planting seeds in the same seed tray and eventually something comes up. Like I think that's another almond seed there or something, I don't know. Okay, so let's see. Oh, this is really firmly in the pot here. Again, I think it rooted through. Let's get it out. Wow, these roots really travel. Well, it was growing really well. And hopefully will continue to do so. So, I see there's a ginkgo growing in here. That is a ginkgo. So I'll have to put that in a pot too. I'll put that, uh, I'll put it somewhere. <laughs> I'll put it here for now. Kind of put a bit of soil on top of it so it doesn't dry out. And I'll get that potted up. Well, that's exciting to get a ginkgo from a seed. Now, I was getting this almond out, which the roots just spread everywhere. So I think, because this root's so long, I'm going to cut it. And, you know, I don't want them too long, so I'm gonna cut this one here and this one back here. A bit of pre-root pruning. Okay, let's get this raked out now. Okay, so here's the almond and you can see there is a, a branch coming from way down below the soil line. Another shoot there. Interesting. So I'll just comb out the roots. Okay, I think that's got the roots combed out. Now, what am I going to prune here? Let me see. So there is a root that kind of comes out from the base of the tree and crosses all the other roots. So I'm going to get rid of that one. It's just not growing in a good direction. So that's gone. Some of these long ones, I've got to get rid of those. So now I have a lot of strong roots coming out from one side. This one kind of climbs up out of the soil line. Oh boy, oh boy, I'm gonna have to remove that one. This one's kind of climbing up out of the soil line too. That one's coming off. I'll shorten this one. This one actually curls around on itself. See, 
Oh my god, it kind of forms a really thick root there. I gotta prune that off. That's gonna be a real problem if I don't do it now. That's a little risky, you know. But, you know, if you don't take a few risks, you never end up with a bonsai. So this one, this one root is just too thick. It comes out of the trunk, goes a strange direction, so that's got to come right off. Like that. So I'm left with a few fine roots down here that can be the beginning of my radial root system. So that one's ready for planting. Now the other almonds are down this direction. There is a cutting of the uh, Cotone Aster here, but I don't see any roots on it. Now that probably would root in springtime maybe, but... So here's my two. This is my one almond here and another one here. So let's check out the root system in those. Maybe, maybe we'll get lucky and get a good root system. There's a lot of seeds in this soil. Oh, there's another seed that's... I don't know what it is, but it looks like it's... There's a husk. It's germinating. Maybe it's attached to this almond. I think it is. Yeah, there's the seed of the almond. Attached to the plant still. That has a pretty good root system. That would only need a little bit of trimming. Take the tap root in half, and that can be planted just like that. That's kind of kind of cool. Okay, and the other one. There's one more to go here. The little one at the end here. And there's another seed husk. There's all kinds of seeds in this soil. I think that's the almond seed here. Let me pull it up. Yeah, there it is. You can see. There's the almond, the husk of the shell, the inside, and a taproot. So we'll just snip that taproot like that, and that can be planted. All right, here's my three almonds then. I'm going to plant them in this pot. This is a big pot, but, you know, I'll let them grow wild for a while, gain strength, and then we'll go after the roots once again. So I'll fill this with soil. That looks like a good level. And I'll get the trees planted. Let's get number one tree, the biggest and tallest one. I'm going to put it in just... Just like that. Lifting the tree up slightly as I put the soil in so those roots, instead of being horizontal, they kind of taper down into the soil more. That'll give you a nice, nice shaped root base. Flat on the bottom, but tapered on the top. Stay. These are pretty equal in size, but I'll put this one Hmm. Over here. Like that. And the third one, I'll place it in between at the back here. Give it some nice room to grow there. And then I can fill the pot up with soil. Make sure the trees are standing nice and straight. Because you know how I like straight trees. Okay. I can give the trees a water. Here I go with the watering. So this water was in the greenhouse, so it's greenhouse temperature. But I don't have a whole lot. I'll have to get some more water. So that will do. And when I get them in the plant room, I'll give them a more thorough watering. I'm going to plant the ginkgo in this nice 
Japanese pot, so I think that'll be good. It'll give it room for those roots to grow and kind of get established in there. I'll get some drainage screens in there, like that, and I can add some soil. Okay, in goes the soil. Yeah, I think about there. And then I'll get the little ginkgo. Okay, in goes the little tree. I'll just get that root into the soil. I'm going to plant it in the middle of the pot because I kind of want the roots to grow equally in all directions. Okay, so that's about as low as I can get the seed. And I'll fill it in with some soil. That's looking good. So because it's already sprouted like this or germinated, I'm going to bring it into the plant room where it'll be warm because it'll grow all winter in the plant room. If I leave it out in the greenhouse here, it'll probably... Uh, it might live if I heat the greenhouse, but I'm not going to keep the greenhouse that warm, so it'll, it would probably die over the winter. So I think it'll be a tree for the indoors this winter. And I have no water for it, so I'll have to bring it inside to water it. On this Ficus Friday, I got all the remaining tropicals that were out here in the greenhouse potted up so I can bring them inside to the plant room. And I also got the photos taken of the auction ficus for the auction catalog. I still can't get used to this panoramic view of winter when I'm out here in the greenhouse nice and warm. It's a strange feeling, but it's also a very good feeling. And that's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.